Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and to tell you the truth, I don't know what to call this episode. Ship updates this week? Well, pff, still no Star Runner. We're all waiting, but still no Star Runner. And I didn't want to leave you guys without an episode, and I figured this might be <laughs> some interesting uh, footage that you want to see. With the mask contest that's going on, of course, we're all probably used to a lot of gladiuses out there trying to hunt us down, trying to kill us, trying to get that 50 unique kills. The people who are trying to do it legitimately, hats off to you. Um, but there's a lot of gladiuses out there trying to do this. I am currently flying my uh, pirate caterpillar and I'm unloaded, no minerals, no nothing, but I am now approaching Bezdek. I was thinking maybe pick up some minerals, do a quick flip, make a few bucks but fate intervenes <laughs> fate intervenes and puts me in one of the most unique dog fights I have ever had in Star Citizen I am so glad I recorded this now in the past you've heard me talk about one of the problems with Newtonian physics it's one of the things that it, it's kind of one of the inconvenient truths of Newtonian physics is that you know when an object is in motion like a spaceship and then you decouple it it stays at that speed especially if you're up in space but to a certain degree that holds true in atmosphere as well now I see this gladius I know what he's after so I figure with the bigger guns on the command module maybe I can get a lucky hit and I get his shields and I get his hull but now we're into a turning contest. As I'm turning around, I'm very quickly realizing, no, there's no way, even with the atmospheric resistance working against them, there's no way that I'm ever going to be able to bring my guns to bear. I kind of wanted to know. I wasn't really all that worried about the situation because obviously I have a huge hit point buffer to work with. And if you watch the damage state on my hull, you'll see that this is not really overly dangerous, at least yet. Eventually, if we had kind of kept playing this game, he would eventually wear me down or run out of ammunition, one or the other. But obviously, I cannot bring my guns to bear. Now, I have no one in the turrets, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the game. I'm going to kind of change the way that I'm playing the game. And I am now going to try to use Newtonian physics against this guy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pick a direction with my ship heading up out into space. And I'm going to try to build up as much speed as possible. I am actually going to try to throw this guy off and force him now to chase me. That's the ideal situation I want him to be in because once he starts chasing me, his maneuverability, once we go beyond SCM speeds and we start going up into the high, high, high rates of travel, his SCM speed is, or his ability to maneuver is going to be kind of counteracted by the momentum that he's built up. And so he's not going to have the maneuverability that ordinarily he would have. And as you can see, he's still shooting me and he's still chasing me, but now I'm heading up into space and I am just pouring on the speed. I'm trying to get away from him and trying to build up as much momentum as possible. Well, not really trying to get away from him. I'm just trying to draw, I'm trying to lure him after me because had I had someone in the turrets or different guns on the turrets especially, and this kind of did inform some uh, recent ship purchases on my Caterpillar, which I hope to show off at some point in the near future, but getting back on track sorry um yeah so i'm building up a lot of speed here i'm heading up out of atmosphere but i'm gonna actually cut myself short i'm gonna get a little bit impatient to kind of want to turn around and start fighting this guy and i really should have gone a little bit harder before i decoupled and turned you've heard me talk about this before building up momentum decoupling and turning especially on a fighter so you can imagine how this would play out in something like a corsair or a Connie, but we're using the Caterpillar as the example here. So now with his maneuverability shot, 
I start firing at him. Now pay attention to my speed because it is going to start bleeding off here because I didn't go up high enough. The planet's gravity has is slowly capturing me and it's pulling me back down, but I don't realize it. So if you watch the altimeter and the speedometer, you're going to see that speed bleeding off. But even with the small amount of speed that I am maintaining, which is barely over 200, I can now easily track this guy in decoupled mode with my caterpillar. So, I mean, you can imagine, like, I'm constantly taking his shields down and I'm getting some hull hits on this guy. But you can imagine this with something that is far more competent for this type of work, like a Corsair. This is, you know, this is kind of where, you know, when I talk about people using Arena Commander and putting too much faith in what Arena Commander tells them is a good ship or is a bad ship, it really does produce skewed results. You have to go into Star Citizen to really get an accurate test of how things are going to perform in Star Citizen. Now, this isn't to say that, oh, you know, the new meta is the, the Caterpillar. It isn't. But what I am saying is that, you know, with the proper use of Newtonian physics, you can take a ship that ordinarily shouldn't stand a chance and you can make it, make it dangerous and make it relevant. I, I, every time I watch this particular portion of the footage, I'm just looking at that front turret and I'm thinking, man, if I had some revenants in that turret and somebody sitting there, this dude would be dusted. Because remember, he's, you know, his maneuverability, his static maneuverability is very much dependent on, on the speed that he's, you know, he's traveling. He can't just maneuver around and get on my rear end even when I'm facing this way because he has to overcome the momentum that he already has to do pull off a maneuver like that and that's one of the things that a lot of people forget about is they you know they think that once you're kind of already moving at that speed then you can just change direction and move around but it's if you're flying your ship and you're doing a thousand meters a second and all of a sudden you try to change direction does it respond immediately does it respond quickly no you end up sliding and that's what's happening to this guy is he's sliding and trying to stay out of my gun range, but he can't. So he's in a dogfight with a caterpillar thanks to Newtonian physics. And you can see how much my speed is bled off here, but it's still impacting him. At this point, I think it's kind of fair to say that he is probably either moved into a decoupled mode or that he is. Whoops. Yep. That's why you should be looking at the altimeter. <laughs> so, whoop, we're going to get a little bump here, but that's really the first real hull damage, that significant hull damage that we take if you've been watching uh, the damage to my ship. But I'm just going to start building up that speed again, and I'm just going to start breaking away. With big ships like this, you have to remember like the leeway in hit points that you have especially in a situation like this and this is why i kind of you know i always kind of say you know fighters aren't really all that impactful once you start getting to the bigger ships things like the eclipse things like the harbinger things like the retaliator those are scary ships when you're in a ship like this a gladius a couple of gladiuses not really because you can use momentum and newtonian physics against them and their maneuverability kind of goes out the window so you remember back in the day when you would talk about buying a ship like this and someone would say, oh, I'm just going to shoot you down in a hornet. I'm going to get into your blind spot and you're, you're never going to be able to get me. It, it, it really doesn't work. If I had had fully manned turrets and some different guns, I mean, I'm, I'm even taking screenshots. Um, yeah, if I had had, you know, fully manned turrets and possibly a fully upgraded ship into the future with upgraded engines, upgraded armor, better shields, this could have this could have ended very shortly and very brutally for this gladius pilot and that's that's kind of why i kind of sit look at ships like the corsair and up and i look at you know i look at fighters and i say if if you've only got a limited amount of money to spend it's better to kind of pick something a little bit bigger than a fighter you know or having like one or two different fighters that are kind of like the meta right now maybe if if your focus is arena commander and maybe some kind of tournament competition in arena commander in the future, then that might be a very solid pick. But if your focus is actually living, thriving and surviving in the star citizen universe, then 
maybe it's better to aim a little bit higher. At this point, I think he's kind of confronted the, the futility of what he's done. Neither one of us, I, I would say honestly, has walked away with a full win here. He has survived, I have survived, but I have escaped, right? And I think that that kind of illustrates that it's not quite all that easy to, you know, just kind of get in the old cargo ship's blind spot and shoot them down. But, you know, in a way, it does kind of illustrate that when you get into one of these situations, you know, when you when you all of a sudden you're like, oh, crap, here we go. Don't just alt F4 the game. Don't just kind of combat log it or, you know, go blah, 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 grief first. Equip your cargo ship with with some good guns. Get some get some buddies to come on and, you know, man your turrets. Kind of build some of those social connections. And who knows, if I had had somebody in those damn turrets and I had some better guns in them, because I hate those those uh, those bearing laser cannons. I want some I want some revenants, and I think that's the first thing I do when I get back in games. I'm gonna put some revenants on those turrets. But this, you know, this is kind of you know, it's not something that you just give up and throw your hands in the air and say, oh my God, griefers. Had, imagine if I had pulled off a kill on this guy. If I had had just one guy in that front turret with some revenants, I think I would have gotten a kill there. And it would have been a good one. And it, I think it would have made it a better video. But don't just give up. Don't just scream griefers. Try, man. And trust me, using momentum and using Newtonian physics against a fighter is isn't just like some pie in the sky idea it works just <laughs> try it one or two fighters at a time don't try to go after an entire squadron or <laughs> jump into local chat and say well i'm in my caterpillar so if any of you wusses and you gladiuses want to take me on come and get me you know try to keep the numbers small but There are some inexperienced Gladius pilots out there right now. Let's be honest. There are some inexperienced Gladius pilots out there. And you might be able to pull off some pretty wicked kills. So, if you own a Caterpillar or something similar, maybe it's worth giving this a shot. The Caterpillar dog fighting ship. Who knew? for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.